Good evening and greetings from India. I am Nisha Nair, Associate Professor and Associate Dean, Jindal Global Law School, OP Jindal Global University, and it is my absolute honor and privilege to welcome the distinguished chief guest, dignitaries on the dais, students, faculty, and staff members to the commencement lecture on the theme of life in law, past, present, and the future, as our first year students begin their academic journey at Jindal Global Law School. I now request Professor S.G. Srijit, Executive Dean, Jindal Global Law School, to deliver the welcome address. Good evening to everyone. Uh, Honorable Justice uh, Rajesh Bindal, Chief Guest of the Day and the Distinguished Speaker, his family members, other distinguished guests, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Registrar, my colleague, Professor Anand Prakash Mishra, Director, Law Admissions, Professor Nisha Nair, Associate Dean, Vice Deans, Associate Deans, Assistant Deans of Jindal Global Law School, distinguished members of the faculty, and my dear students. Uh, welcome to the 15th commencement lecture of Jindal Global Law School on the theme, Life in Law, Past, Present, and the Future. Well, dear ones, your life in law starts today, from this moment. You will hear from Honorable Justice Bindal, what does it entail to live a life in law? My ideas on that would be mere speck in the larger scheme of things. Your faculty members, who are truly distinguished individuals, will inform your inquisitive minds about the functions of law in society, which will make your tryst with law, rather life in law, much more meaningful. Hence, with your permission, I would like to swerve to speak more about the physical thing, OP Jindal Global University and Jindal Global Law School, particularly about its lights, sights, and sounds. For preparing this speech, I confirm I've not harmed any algorithm. No chat GPT has been used. Just my heart GPT has been put to use. No algorithm, but just the rhythms of my heart prompted me to write this speech. So mistake me not. So what are these light sights and sounds of Opijindal Global University? Early at the dawn, when you wake up, when the clouds get that silvery lining of the day, Jindal University campus would bask in gold. And from your hostels, yonder by the flagpole, the sun would show its virgin rays of the day on the Indian national flag, flying high in national pride on the Jindal campus. The windows of that 10 story super massive, I use the word super massive faculty block, it's quite a spectacle would reflect the sunlight to glisten the surroundings as the rays of the sun would sanitize the insides of that building. Then we can see the faculty members and the students flowing in groups from their offices and the hostels to the academic block. No one has time to tarry. Everyone is in a hurry. Everyone has business in their mind. Not sure how many of you at that point will listen to the singing of a skylark or Haryana's own Black Franklin. Not sure how many of you will admire the dew drops on the blades of grass. Not sure how many of you will look at the blossoms on the pathway which ultimately leads from your hostel to the campus. But remember, they're all there for us to see and listen. Do acknowledge them with a glance or with a nod. It would mean a lot, not for them, but for yourself, which is being tortured in the morning rush. Inside the class, you look at the information which would be shown to you through the many screens by your professors. Listen, rather feel, the knowledge which will be shared as speech by your faculty members. And do remember that knowledge has a fragrance. Allow your mind to feel that fragrance liberally without any prejudices or inhibitions. Soon you too would start to exude that fragrance. And when there is no class, 
occasionally sit under the national flag, flying on one of the tallest flagpoles in India. Listen to its fluttering, feel the ripples of pride and honor, and the sense of oneness and belonging passing through your mind. When skies get dark during the day, indicating an impending downpour, look around to see the landscape preparing itself to receive that shower of water. Pause the rain, listen to the gurgle of water, which flows down the drain beneath the ground. Inhale deeply and feel the fragrance of the damp vegetation all around you, and then make a trek to the mess. Sit near a window and sip a hot cup of tea and turn things into a tranquilizing experience. At night, listen to the chirping of crickets, singing of saccadas, and sometimes the croaking of frogs. They are the artists of nature, which the nature has employed in OP Jindal Global University for our amusements. What I've been trying to convey by this narrative is that there are many small joys of life and they are in every molecule of our existence. We need to feel them, and for that, we need to have the essential beauty of mind. This sense of beauty, which in fact is a sensitivity to the things seemingly insignificant around us, is a prerequisite for obtaining knowledge, particularly legal knowledge. No knowledge will grow in abundance in an arid mind. Hence, my dear ones, Turn your mind into an arable land for sowing the seeds of knowledge and for a rich harvest later on. These small things, smallest things, I hope will become the life hacks for your life in law which will unfold before you. I welcome all of you to become part of the JGU consciousness. Perhaps I need not add that all of you have my best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Srijit, for your kind, vivid, and inspiring welcome address. I now invite Professor Anand Prakash Mishra, Director of Law Admissions, OP Jindal Global University, and Associate Dean at Jindal Global Law School to introduce the class of 2023. Very good evening, everyone. Uh, this is my absolute delight and honor to present this uh, great class of 2023 to none other than our chief guest, Honorable Mr. Justice Bintel, in this auditorium. Uh, I must say, I have completed 12 years in this campus, and every year we have improved in terms of our student quality, in terms of our uh, number of programs, in terms of our outreach, in terms of our students coming from almost every part of the country and around the world. This year we have 1,600 students who have joined Jindal Global Law School from all over the country and some 10 uh, foreign countries. These students join our three undergraduate programs, namely BA Legal Studies and BA Criminology and Criminal Justice programs, which are three-year undergraduate degree programs, and also, in a way, an innovation of Jindal Global Law School in the field of legal education, as well as the students in five-year LLB programs, including BA LLB Honors, BBA LLB Honors, and BCom LLB Honors programs. The students who have joined our postgraduate programs, they have joined the three-year LLB program, and the one-year residential LLM programs. I would like our honorable uh, chief guest to uh, uh, pay some attention to this data which I want to present. The class of five-year law program here, uh, which is a class of 300 students in BLLB program, 300 in BBLLB program, and 180 in BCom LLB program. This class of 780 comes from 25 states and five union territories, as well as 10 different countries. In this class, the average LSAT score, LSAT India is our entrance exam, 
and that's the only test through which we admit a students in five-year program is 79.44 percentile and the minimum score at which the student is admitted is 60 percentile. Uh, I also looked at the class 12th marks of all the students who have joined our five-year law program and I'm delighted to inform that the average class 12th marks is 85 percent and uh, that is certainly more than what I got in my class 12th in those times and many of people and it was actually considered to be very good marks in the early 90s. Our students come from uh, various cities around the country, but of course they are also joined from California in the US, from UAE, from Muscat, Dubai, Santiago in Chile, from Qatar. There are US citizens, there are Canadian citizens, and there is one student who is a citizen of uh, the Republic of Iran. Uh, in our various uh, states and union territories, students have come in largest number from Maharashtra, and uh, Delhi, Karnataka, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, and West Bengal are other states from where highest number of students have joined the class. Uh, I must say, this in no way reduces the importance that we have students who have joined from Gangtok, from Sikkim, from uh, uh, Goa, from even the smaller states. I went through the number of districts I could not compile, but I believe there are more than 350 districts in this country which are represented in the residency of our students here. So it all, almost a mini India had joined our law school in this class of 2023. I have a few more minutes and I would like to tell that 200 students have joined our three-year BA Legal Studies program. 125 are girl candidates and 75 are male candidates. I would like to tell you that never ever in the history of our law school, every academic program at Jindal Global Law School, the gender ratio is uh, in favor of the female and 56% of the class are female students and 44% are male students this year. Uh, I would like to tell that uh, if I look at the academic backgrounds, almost every leading school in this country uh, from where students have joined our undergraduate program, there are 73 students who have joined our BA Criminology program. BA Criminology and Criminal Justice, I would like to tell our chief guest that we are the only university which started a residential BA program in criminology and criminal justice. Today, 75 students are studying this program here, including uh, 45 girls and 30 boys. Uh, again, from around the country, from almost uh, 15 different states and few union territories. Uh, I will come to postgraduate programs now. We have 300 students who have joined our three-year LLB program, uh, which is arguably one of the most popular uh, postgraduate law degree program in the country. And there are graduates not just from the top degree colleges in India, but even there are graduates of King's College London, University College London, and many other foreign universities. There are graduates from every leading uh, degree college in India, including there are almost one dozen students from Lady Sriram, LSR, and St. Stephen's. There are another one dozen from Miranda House, SRCC, and around 30 students only from the North Campus colleges, uh, which are, include Hindu, Hansraj, Kirorimal, and mostly Delhi University uh, top colleges. At the same time, there are students from Loyola College, Madras, from Sanjeevius in Mumbai, Sanjeevius in Kolkata, from leading degree colleges around the country from various cities. And I have no doubt in saying that this could be probably one of the finest three-year LLB class anywhere in the country. This also includes those 100 plus students who have studied three-year BA legal studies in Jindal Global Law School and now chosen to join LLB three-year program at Jindal Global Law School itself. And, uh, uh, that's, that's something which I'm extremely proud of, that the students are actually choosing the university for their second degree. 
Lastly, this is also reflected in our LLM class, where some 240 students have joined our residential LLM program in 10 different specializations, ranging from corporate law, intellectual property, ADR, to uh, international law, constitutional law, criminal law, human rights, general legal practice, and even LLM in environmental law, energy, and climate change. Uh, the LLM class uh, students have joined from most of the mo uh, I mean leading law schools in this country, including National Law School Bangalore uh, and other uh, national law universities as well. They have joined from University of Delhi, from Banaras Hindu University, from uh, University of Madras, from uh, various central and state universities around the country. And most importantly, our graduates from Jindal Global Law School have also joined the LLM program, making it one of the most special residential LLM programs in the country. And with these words, I would like to have, I mean, the students to uh, rejoice the fact that your class is being introduced to none other than uh, Honorable Justice Rajesh Spindle. And uh, you have to work hard and keep the highest academic standards to always think that the way you were introduced and the way you attended your first lecture from someone who is representing uh, the highest uh, judiciary, the highest authority in this country. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mishra, for introducing the diverse and dynamic student cohort of 2023 batch who have joined Jindal Global Law School. May I now request Professor C. Rajkumar, the founding vice chancellor of OP Jindal Global University and the founding dean of Jindal Global Law School to introduce JGU, JG Ellis, and our chief guest. Thank you, Nisha. Uh, congratulations. Um, I would like to extend a warm welcome uh, to all our incoming students of the 2023 batch. Uh, this is a very special moment and um, because I know that uh, you have come from, as uh, Anand mentioned, that what an extraordinary group of individuals who have come from across the country and around the world, from so many different social and economic backgrounds, from so many different um, linguistic uh, backgrounds. Uh, it's, it's a microcosm of India. Uh, that's what uh, Sonipat has indeed become and so I am so delighted uh, to once again extend a warm welcome to each one of you. Uh, you are privileged in so many different ways. The fact that we are able to physically welcome you barely a few years ago, this would not have been possible. Uh, all of us recovered from COVID for two years. The campus was pretty much closed. And um, from now on, we will obviously be entirely operating in a physical manner. And so the fact that you can be part of a fully residential campus and enjoy the campus experience, that's indeed a privilege. The second privilege, of course, you have is to be part of this commencement lecture. At this university, from the very beginning, we have developed a healthy practice of having a very distinguished individual who has made immense contributions to the field of law and justice to be able to uh, deliver the commencement lecture. And the commencement word is important because it's, uh, it signifies the beginning. This is where it all begins for you. So to be able to have the opportunity to speak from a man who has made immense contributions to the world of law and justice is a true honor, which very few of us got the privilege when we entered the portals of an institution. So once again, I want to uh, you know, help you understand this special moment. I also want to take this moment to thank Honorable Mr. Justice Rajesh Bindal, Judge of the Supreme Court of India, for readily accepting our invitation and to be able to take out time from his very, very pre precious, busy and hectic schedule. Uh, for all the students of law here, I must tell you that the judges of uh, the Supreme Court, but also high courts and other courts in India, they are among the most hardworking people in the world. Uh, the docket of each judge is simply unmanageably uh, difficult and they make so many sacrifices, personal and professional, to discharge their responsibilities as a judge. And for Justice Bindal to take out time and to be here 
means that he will have to work later at night to be ready and willing to hear cases tomorrow morning. And um, all I can say is that he's a very special person for us, not only because of the fact that he is a judge of the Supreme Court of India, he's also the son of the soil, he's indeed from the state of Haryana. So we extend a warm welcome to Honorable Justice Mindel to the OP Jindal Global University. I also want to recognize the presence of uh, uh, Honorable Judge Pramod Goel, the District Judge of Sonipat. Uh, give him a uh, good hand. And also Mr. Arvind Kumar, the Chief Judicial Magistrate, uh, both of whom have kindly accepted our invitation and are indeed present. I also want to recognize the presence of uh, Mrs. Renuka Bindal, uh, the Distinguished uh, Life Partner of Honorable Justice Bindal. And, uh, Mr. Himanshu Bindal, who is the son of uh, Honorable Justice Bindal. Thank you so much for being present here. Uh, I know that we are all anxious uh, to be to hear Justice Bindal, so I'll keep my comments uh, brief. I just want to mention that um, this is a very special moment for all of you, for students who have chosen to study law. I want to take it back to my own early days. I, as some of you know, I am from the state of Tamil Nadu, and. Uh, in Chennai, uh, I have 22 cousins, most, most of them are doctors and engineers. And one fine day when I confessed to my family members that I want to study law, over 20 relatives of mine turned up at my home completely unannounced and they began a conversation with my parents. They began by saying that what happened to Raj, he was a good student. And some others said that, you know, he was never cut out to become a doctor but we were at least hoping he'll become an engineer. And some others said that, you know, doctors and engineers, you need to be intelligent and hardworking, but we were at least hoping he'll become a chartered accountant. Why law? Such was the disdain that this society had for the study of law, notwithstanding the fact that the leaders of the Indian Freedom Movement happened to be lawyers. Mahatma Gandhi was a lawyer, Sadar Patel was a lawyer, Rajendra Prasad was a lawyer, Dr. Ambedkar was a lawyer. Pretty much every major leader of the Indian Freedom Movement happened to be lawyers. Yet, the evolution of legal education and legal profession since the dawn of the independence, of course our first Prime Minister Nehru was a lawyer, since then, if you look at the trajectory of the growth and evolution of legal education and legal profession, it is indeed a sad reality that law was need not seen to be the most attractive and preferred choice for young and bright students. That was the case over three decades ago when I decided to study law. But that's not the case now. Today, as I look at this class, some of the best and the brightest of students have made your choices and law has become a preferred career choice. And I want to take this moment to congratulate each one of you for having taken the decision to study law, but also to congratulate and thank your parents for helping you and to defer to your judgment as you enter into the portals of this institution and indeed the legal profession. The second reason I think it's a very special moment for you is that you are going to be part of an effort to build a society that is going to be based on the rule of law. While in India we have a fantastic constitution and also have been able to institutionalize democracy, the reality is the gap between the rhetoric of law and the reality of law continues to impact adversely the lives of ordinary people. And so as young people who will enter into the profession of law, you have an onerous responsibility to uphold the rule of law. You have a significant challenge ahead as you enter into the profession to be able to fulfill the demands and aspirations of seeking justice. Rule of law and access to justice are continuous efforts that you will be part of and that becomes an even greater responsibility. The third is also about recognizing the inherent threat of democratic institutions. Lawyers and judges have a very significant role to speak truth to power and in that process also address the big challenges of our times. Today, lawyers and judges are called upon to adjudicate on extremely complex matters. Those matters which has a direct bearing on the ability of them 
to adhere to the norms and principles of rule of law on the one hand, but also to be able to deliver justice. That requires enormous sense of integrity, honesty, rectitude, and courage of conviction to be able to do even the uncomfortable thing because there is a higher order expected out of people who are part of the legal profession and you will be called upon to do so and that is a very big responsibility. I also want to mention that as the law and the legal profession is changing, increasingly the world of law is going to become even more complex as artificial intelligence and robotics and machine learning and other types of technological interventions are going to shape the future of law. Today, your learning in law is going to be very different from what it was when I went to law school or for that matter, when Honorable Justice Bindal went to law school. The world of law is dramatically changing and changing as we speak. But the fundamental principles of law for which law and justice need to be continuously worked towards developing that does not change. While the new perspectives and knowledge development will change and our ability to impart interdisciplinary legal education will continuously evolve, your own sense of responsibility to be part of the legal profession will not change. And that requires even greater work and indeed tenacity on each one of your part. I want to end by saying that this university was created as a philanthropic initiative of our founding chancellor and benefactor, Mr. Naveen Jindal. The university was created as a tribute to his father, Sri O.P. Jindal, whom I am very happy to let all of you know that was had Justice Rajesh Bindal has had very close interactions with Sri O.P. Jindal, and I am sure he will share that with us. But I want to bring home the larger point that for somebody like Mr. Naveen Jindal to commit towards philanthropy and to ensure academic freedom and autonomy and independence to be able to build a world-class university in Haryana requires enormous far-sighted vision which he demonstrated in that effort. I had the privilege to meet him in the year 2006 and 2007 and spent a year persuading him to do these things. Hitherto, I had my education here in Delhi University, Oxford University, Harvard Law School, and then practiced law in New York and taught law in Japan and Hong Kong. And my own dream as a young student at Oxford was to be part of an effort to build a world-class university in India, to be part of an effort to build a world-class law school in India. With that dream, I spent the next decade writing a paper entitled Establishing India's First Global University with the First Global Law School. With that extraordinarily and serendipitous meeting with Mr. Jindal, we began the journey, and I must confess that the last 15 years has been truly inspiring, transformative. We began in a very modest manner with only 100 students and 10 faculty members and 20 administrative staff and four classrooms and one office space for me and my colleagues. With that modest beginning on 30th September 2009, we continue the journey, and today, as we move into the 15th year of our institution building, I'm happy to report that we have 12 different schools. We have over 1,200 full-time faculty members, nearly 2,000 administrative staff, and of course, nearly 11,000 students who are part of this community. You belong to this community, and indeed in that process, belong to the 8,000 plus alumni who are spread across India and around the world. I want to end by saying, that education, including legal education, is a true privilege. Today, India is a young nation, an old civilization. While we have indeed become the world's largest population with over 1.45 billion people, the remarkable truth about India is the fact that we are a young nation. 950 million people in India are less than 35 years of age. Justice Bindal is not less than 35. I am not less than 35. Most of your faculty will not be less than 35, but you are. Young Indians and others from around the world will be shaping the future of India and the future of the world. That gives you enormous sense of responsibility as this education will empower you to be part of an effort to change the world and make it a better place. I would like to take this opportunity to say congratulations to each one of you. Welcome to OP Jindal Global University and Jindal Global Law School. And I look forward to interacting with you and seeing on 
in campus and to be part of an effort to build this institution and take it to even greater heights. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Rajkumar, for that befitting and inspiring introduction to JGU. It is my proud privilege to invite our chief guest, Honorable Justice Rajesh Bindal, Judge Supreme Court of India, to deliver the commencement lecture on the theme of life in law, past, present, and the future. Professor Rajkumar, other dignitaries on the dais, off the dais, members of faculty, and dear students. I think first of all, you should have a big round of applause for your achievement for admission in this institute. <laughs> I think from the backside, we are not seeing the clapping. Probably they are not happy with the admission. <laughs> it's a great achievement that you have admission in this prestigious law college. As you have been told, it's a truly global university. Firstly, you see the map of India, they say all states are represented here, union territories and states. And the second part is different countries also. That makes it a truly global university. Otherwise, there, were, there are very few universities where you get the students from other countries. But I can share when I was in BCom, I was doing BCom in Chandigarh, we had some students from Mauritius. At that time, a lot of students used to come in Chandigarh also. Now also we have some students in Chandigarh from different countries, but we had one in our school also. University there were many, but in our college also we had from Mauritius. But now the number is little less as compared to because probably they also have their facilities in those countries also. A very good evening. It's an honor for me also to come to this university and see the infrastructure. I had a round of the university. It is seeing, seeing is believing. The kind of infrastructure you have, the kind of faculty I was told. And you see presently the position is that at this age, we can't get admission in these colleges. In our times, if you see, when I had completed my law in 1985 from Kukshetra University, the law colleges, it was three-year course at that time. Five-year had just started. So the law departments in all universities, if you see, used to be in one corner of the university because they're all students used to be either the leaders or the leaders in making, normally. Less discipline in law department, but that, I think, atmosphere has changed now. It's a big change. And uh, admission also, good data has been given to you that how much marks in competitive exam for admission or in plus two also in our times, probably no admission test for admission. And uh, law used to be the last choice where nobody who got admission in any other course will go to law. So if somebody is not getting anywhere, so he says, all right, let us do law. That was the choice. And admission, anybody could get with 45% marks. That's all. In BA, you need to have 45%. And some colleges were there who were giving less than 45 also. And if you see in our times, plus two, plus two was not there, it was metric only thereafter, pre-engineering, pre-university kind of a things, and thereafter three year graduation. 60% marks, very few will get. Normal was 50, 52, 3, 4, 5. If somebody gets 60, that was, said these are, these are really intelligent students. But now 60 plus is practically nothing if you get. Because people go for perfect 10. If even one mark is deducted, they say, why it has been deducted? Why you lost one mark? On that also, the students are upset. So that is the competition now. And in law, probably, if you have this, 
as first not first if one of the top choices and that is the change now and if you compare our times probably there was no moot court no court visit nothing it was just lecture only and you give the your exam you take the exams and exam also very easy 10 questions you have to attempt 5 only and 5 when getting 45% marks not very difficult hardly the students used to be serious because the only idea was to read there used to be allahabad last series at that time the old time must have seen or the question answer types of books nobody read bear acts and all that so just just cramming there and all that 3 4 days before the exam you cram it and you pass it so that is there now you just see the change throughout the year you have to be serious throughout the year you are busy in your moot court throughout the year you have some projects to execute this is the change so it has with this change you get practical knowledge also which was missing at our times i appeared in court after exam when i joined law probably after one month in court i had appeared only for seeking adjournment of a case and that too was difficult to stand in court at that time because we never saw the court basically so that is a big change and uh, what further i can say is that if you ask some teacher to give a lecture probably for one hour he can give good lecture to you if you ask a lawyer he can stand up and argue a case for days together but now our role is change we speak through judgments only it's very difficult and also in court if you interject more in the arguments and push questions to the lawyers they don't like it they say you hear our part and we are paid for hearing only basically but in any case today i have been assigned this duty so little bit experience which i have i'll share with you now as has been told to you this university has been set up in the name of late op jindal ji and one thing popular about him is as he said is where others saw walls he saw doors so that was the positivity in his life he was not a technical or management or engineering graduate but the kind of empire the level of empire he has created you must be knowing or you should see because he was a practical man he knew lot of solutions i had been associated with this group jindal group from i think 91 to 2006 before my elevation up to my elevation so number of time i used to meet him him also sometimes at hisar and sometimes at delhi also and chandigarh also always solution matlab he was not a law graduate if you discuss some case also he will give answer in legal terms also to you so that was the practical part of him totally grounded person hard working and believed in philanthropic activities if you see the school you must have heard vidya devi jindal school in hisar i think one of the top girls schools they have the hospital also there this college is there in raigad also there are lot of institutions there managing only for basically not a profit motive in any one of them so idea is they got something from the society so they should give it back to the society and there is a book also on its life which has been written that is titled as op jindal story of a man who talked to machines and if you see when i used to go there at isar or meet some of the officers they would share that if some engineering graduate will set up a plant suppose for example for 100 rupees he had the idea to set up for 20 30 40 rupees only this was the practical part there was the difference because in case you manage the initial cost you always are one up 
so we should learn from that kind of a personality and you are happy that you you should be happy that you are an institute which is in his name another person mr rajkumar has talked to you mr navin jindal that was his brain child now that he set up this university he is also known for one case if all of you must be knowing or you should know the national flag right to fly a national flag that litigation because he said that he once he could fly the national flag in his office in america where he was studying why can't he fly in india from that the idea had flown and he fought that litigation delhi high court then supreme court and thereafter the flag code had to be amended so this is the innovative ideas but along with that you see this is a right all right given for all of us he had fought the litigation right to all of us but one thing is there which probably we lot of students or professional also and lot of people in the society what they are missing is that we only talk about our law rights only fundamental rights i have this right i have this right we are all forgetting about our duties we don't read article 51 which gives a long list of duties also so that is also very important because we had fought for something giving right to all of you all of us but what we think is that no i should get this this i business is there in all things so equally important is your duties also so once you keep that in mind i think everything in the society will be balanced now you have been told about this university you must have read in the brochures before taking admissions also lot of achievements the one of the prestigious universities private and global also and i need not repeat that part but one thing is there that this is recognized as an institution of eminence by the ministry of education also so they also recognize the quality of education being provided there and this all was not possible could not be possible without the vision with which this university was set up and professor rajkumar who was there from day one in this university along with him the faculty because this is the dedication of the faculty which is very important to bring any institution to the top the method of teaching these all collectively make an institution good so this all efforts by all of them together has built this institution and i think now studying in this institute you can have sitting maybe you say that on your past you say we have got admission in the good university so it will continue no past achievements yes a source of motivation for you that yes this institute had achieved something but you can't just sit idle you have to work hard to maintain it because space at the top is very less the moment anybody can be close to you he can just push you also so you have to be very serious in that and take your past and then work hard to achieve more you may be going out from this university with flying colors five stars on your certificates but one thing is there wherever you go if you do something wrong either as a student in the university or outside the campus maybe as a student or as a alumni and if somebody asks you where you have studied because this is the normal question people ask if something wrong is in a, where you are studying where you have studied and if that no name comes op jindal global university so you will be bringing a bad name also to the university so you have to be serious about it you have to think many times doing anything wrong either in the university or outside the university that only can bring the reputation of the university on top otherwise your little thing little wrong things or little error somewhere can bring bad name and this institution you will not be able to say with your pride and pr proud that i am a student of that university you will somehow will be shirking to tell the name all right i have done my law that's all or maybe little you say some university in haryana 
or Sonipat because in Sonipat you have a lot of universities so somebody may not. Two, three, four questions you will answer. You should have a proud all times that you have studied in OB Jindal University. So that has to be taken care of while as a student also and as you go out. So that the university's name is not Now I can also share the quality of education because as I was, people knew about that. I am having some links with the Jindal group because I was dealing with their cases. So when this university was set up in 2009, few people approached me also for admission that can you just help for admission. So I requested one of the directors once or twice that please help this is a something has asked me. So the only answer was that the entire admission is on merits only and the university is being seen by Professor Rajkumar and there is no interference in that. And that is the reason probably this university has the quality. Admissions also, education also because there is no interference from outside. So that's a very good thing otherwise sometimes we have that admissions are also given. Now coming to the other issue. I think this campus is a modern day Gurukul. Lo, lo you find that there are a lot of names given to the schools, Gurukul and all that, but those are not really Gurukul as we read in our early, older books. Because here you are staying in the campus. What Gurukul meant, if you read? Where the Guru is there, your teacher is there, and Kul used to be said home or family. So you are staying here, most of your teachers are also staying here and you are getting education here. The only difference being that the facilities which used to be there earlier times in the Gurukul, you are having much more better facilities now. Earlier there was a lot of sacrifice when you go to the Gurukul. If you see in Ramayana, Lord Ram and Lakshman both had gone to the Gurukul. They had left their life in the palace and gone to the huts only with, to stay with the Guru and take their teachings. But now you have lot of facilities here. That is the difference. But one fact is there that whatever you can learn from here, you should learn as much you can because this time will not come again. Lot of issues are there, you see. Once you are in profession, nobody will teach you with that togetherness or closeness or without any motive as in the institute is. The teachers are always happy if their students grow up. They are not jealous of you. Rather they feel that if our institute, in our institute the students go up on the top in their profession, they would be very happy. But that may not be the position in the profession wherever you go maybe in litigation, maybe in service, because a lot of jealousies also come in. So whatever you can get, get from your teachers. And teachers you can get more, how you can get more. The teacher ratio also has been said, I think this may be the best, one to nine, it's not a college or a university, one to nine is kind of a tuition class. If you go to a tuition classes also now, probably you have 40 students sitting in a class, 50. And some of the tuition, Teachers are teaching the classes with a mic because the class is so big. But here is one to nine ratio probably hardly any university may have that kind of a student teacher ratio. Normally every teacher will teach you whatever is taught to the class. But there are few teacher, few students who can take more from them. And how? Just by respecting your teachers. If you respect your teacher, they also have a different attachment with you. Behavior in your class with the teacher or behavior with your student because your reputation always travels. The teacher knows everything. If you think that whatever you are doing in the campus, the teacher will not come to know. No. They know about all the students. And the very positive part of a teacher is that he remembers even his older students also. 
maybe he, somebody has passed out 10 years back if he comes he will recall all right you were that 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 names also sometimes they remember and thereafter they may also remember that your deeds or misdeed positive or negative points that you were doing this 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 so that kind of a relation student and teachers have so you should build your relation with your teacher of the kind that this continues throughout your life and then every time because if you are a good relation you can always approach your teacher for any issue because they are always available to guide you and there are teachers who are available 24 by 7 to guide you because it's their passion only if somebody joins the teaching profession it is their profession basically to educate the students to educate their whosoever comes to the institute they are studying so that is i think you should have the best part of it when you are studying in this another important part which comes for teaching or education in the university is there is one issue you may not have heard about that there used to be government schemes of adult education long back now probably these are not there so i had gone to canada to attend a course on judicial education there also one of the class was adult education i was little surprised that what kind of course it is the adult education uh, this slogan type of the system or a scheme started by the government long back was to educate the senior citizens or the elders only to the extent that they can read the letters because i am talking about the old time that if some letter comes they can just read that or something like that or some headlines in a newspaper kind of a thing so keeping that in mind i thought i don't know what legal education this adult education they are going to teach us so one thing which was told there which is very important is we are living in the era of technology as has been told by ma'am no lecture is on chat gpt has been prepared so lot of information is available on the google or whatever is their websites different different portals if you see they are the search engines basically otherwise different portals you go they say the biggest problem to teach an adult because you are all adult is that he comes with his own notions only for everything he has lot of knowledge about that subject which a teacher is going to teach so firstly you have to wash off your all knowledge which you got basically raw knowledge from the website about any subject and then only you can add something in your knowledge it is easier to teach a kid in a class because he has curiosity to learn his mind is clean his slate is clean but as far as that is concerned your slate is not clean you have such lot of websites google and then thereafter whatever teacher will teach you say you only know all this subject i know what is 302 304 or any subject you will just have a glance and say no no this i know so whatever important aspects the teacher wants to clarify you you will never be attentive in class so just be careful whenever you go to the class don't see that you have already read about it or you have already seen on the computer and all that this is adult education you have to go with your open mind to learn otherwise you will not learn anything this is the main issue with the adults to teach is difficult to teach the adults and that attitude you have to develop then comparatively when we were there in law you see i had joined law per chance it was not a matter of choice also but in any case the destiny has brought me on this side because i i am also a first generation lawyer belonging to a business family at that time if you do law what were the options either you go in litigation or you can sit for the judicial judiciary examination as a magistrate or public prosecutor or maybe the law officer legal advisor in some government department that also is law officers only probably beyond that there was no opening for a law graduate but now just see the kind of opportunities you have i can just name few but there are number of them 
you have corporate also, business also, mediation, arbitration, then legal researches are there, litigation is there, and service, judicial service, yes, in that part of that only, in-house counsels are there. So these are lot of, there are lot of opportunities now to you. Lot of fields are opening. Probably this is one of the reasons that lot of students are not opt opting for law. We have lot of law graduates or the advocates who are practicing in court, who have done their engineering, who have done their management courses. And that is the added point for them. Because if some issue come with, with reference to engineering part, they will easily appreciate that as compared to a normal person who has done BLLB. So a lot of people are choosing law now, even after doing some other courses also. But one thing is there, I just missed one thing. That the degrees, because I was just sharing one thing with you, that uh, late O.P. Jindal, he was not having any professional or engineering or technical degree with him. It was his practical knowledge, practical mindset. So all these degrees will give you an eligibility to apply somewhere or maybe some job or getting a license. Ultimately, it is the practical knowledge which, which will help you throughout your life. I have seen, I have interviewed the candidates for the judicial service or in different, different interviews. Many of the toppers in the written examination will fail in the interview. And sometimes, sitting outside, he will say, no, he was a topper, why he has not been selected? And you will find because with cramming, they have passed out the written examination. It's all multiple answer questions. So they will cram a lot of questions, say A, B, C, D, whatever is right, they will just stick. If you ask them any practical question, there is no answer. So this is how it happens. So practical knowledge is very important along with your theoretical knowledge. So don't go in only after the degree. This is a very important part of it. <coughs> First generation lawyer, because I was told that in this institute also and I think throughout, lot of students are coming who are the first generation lawyer and the probably it is majority now, about 50 percent. And that's a good sign. The many doctors I think I've heard, their wards are taking law or the engineers also, different, different professions. And in the other side also because everybody thinks that the other profession is good. But there is no doubt, it's a matter of one of the top choices now. No doubt if you are in the first generation lawyer, you may face some difficulties initially. You may have to put in a lot of hard work because you have to stand off your own. It's, you are not sitting in a running train that yes, the train is already on, on the track and you just board the train, so less effort to move the train which is required at the initial stage. But don't be afraid of that. Put your hard work with honesty. It may take little more time, but once you do that, I think you will make a mark and thereafter there is no end to it. The sky is the limit here. So that is very important part. I can share that initially you get very few cases because people don't have confidence on you that how you will perform. Few cases, you have more time. And if you put in the hard work, probably you get very good results. I can share you little experience which I had in the initial stage. Somebody had put confidence. He had given me three, four cases. It was the time when there, there was no computer. Even for typing also, electronic typers, typewriters had started, but computer, these all search engines for judgments and all that was not there. Whatever judgment we had to search, we had to go through maybe 10, 20, 30 books for that. Different, different commentaries of different writers or the digest used to be there. And that too, different, different. Then only we could search the judgments. And at a stage when you don't have your own library also. It's all books only. You can't afford the books initially when you start practice. Now you can have your entire office, entire library in your mobile phone only. This is the change. And in few thousand rupees. Earlier buying the books and library would need thousands of rupees. But in any case, I had the time, so I started working on it. Got some three, four judgments also in that case. 
and when that lawyer who had given me the case saw those judgment he said how did you find this judgment and i could not find it the only difference was there he was a very busy lawyer sometimes they don't get that much of time to spend on a particular case so this is how you build your reputation similarly one there was one matter there were already two matters we had challenged the varieties of some provision of the rules that was also at the initial stage only there were two three matters same issue already dismissed but still i had some judgments i got built up the case went to the court for arguments the judge said see mr bindal we have already dismissed such cases so i only requested just just hear my argument for a minute so i five six seven lines because we could not argue for a long time at that time initial stages i just told him read the provisions and told him little about that he said all right we will consider it the matter was not dismissed on that day only it was reserved and to my surprise also that is these are all encouraging things to my surprise after 3 4 days when the order came in that the notice was issued and ultimately that was allowed despite the other cases being dismissed so that gives you encouragement that gives you some motivation motiva- motivation uh, to work more so this is how at the initial stage if you put your hard work you will certainly make a mark because everybody notices that whosoever is there maybe the lawyers also who assign some work to you maybe in the court also and this is a profession where there is no advertisement issue you are not alive so i'll just refer to there are some ethical problems now while coming back coming to this college only on the way i saw a big board of some political thing and on that you were seeing a sticker of an advocate he had written advocate also so this is a new way for advertisement basically which is otherwise can't do so this is how you can no i was t- touching the issue of your advertisement part because it's all word of mouth if you do somebody's case succeed then that person will tell the other person or the people who are sitting in court they will with word of mouth tell others that he is a very good counsel or your clients also and many clients even if you lose will always say no he is a good counsel because they know his case has been presented properly so they are happy if the case is presented properly many litigants are not interested in the result some are there their effort is that only but lot of litigants are happy if you present their case properly so this is by word of mouth your advertisement is always there and you will start getting work now if you see the litigation also in our time there used to be only civil criminal or revenue or maybe little bit tax type there was no other area of litigation i think with time what a change is there you have lot of political litigation recently have seen the maharashtra also delhi also lot of there long list it takes lot of time of the court and then you have lot of public interest litigation also new new issues are being brought up in court many cases are frivolous or dismissed also but still these also take time because if these are listed in court judges have to read all this and in court also it takes time but still and many of these pals you must have read in the newspaper are not in fact public interest litigation but publicity interest litigation because they know if they file something and you will see that one news will come that this petition has been filed then another will come that this is going to be listed tomorrow and third when it is dismissed so three four times the publicity goes on so some people do that kind of a work only to attract more people to file these cases we have lot of such advocates also but you are not to indulge in all things if there is a real real issue yes you should always take up the cause but not with the effort of publicity lot of you see business is increasing so lot of business related litigation is increasing lot of investment is coming 
from foreign countries here also a lot of industrialization it's a very fast emerging economy you must be ready so if the economy is coming up fast naturally the business is growing and if the business is growing so lot of litigation also comes litigation comes later on a lot of work has started of the convincing drafting of documents this is a very important part lot of projects are being executed so lot of documentation is required for executing the contracts or maybe collaborations and all that so that's also a work though not directly in the litigation part but it is also a work in which lot of law graduates are doing and for this commercial because everybody says the litigation takes lot of time in our country commercial court act was amended uh, enacted and in that lot of provisions of cpc have been amended to put these trials on the fast track but still there are issues now arbitration is another field and especially the international arbitration but in that also probably your contribution also may be important because lot of your business houses they choose either singapore london or other places as the seat of arbitration because they know the things will move fast there why not make india as a hub and do something that we also execute all this or complete the arbitration fast or in the court also don't not like a normal litigation which takes lot of time i will touch that issue of why time is taken and then private international law litigation has emerged lot of foreign awards are coming which are to be executed in india lot of foreign degrees are coming to be executed and then there is lot of litigation of custody of children born out of the parents one is living in india one is abroad maybe both were there either way in india or abroad at some point point of time so that litigation is increasing like anything in fact i can share with you that there was a bill prepared by the ministry of law on that international child abduction and then another bill prepared prepared by the ministry of women and child welfare so there was some meeting some interaction and all that so a committee was constituted there for suggesting a bill or examining both the bills for that law and the ministry of women and child welfare nominated me as the chairperson of that committee when i was in chandigarh so we had members in that committee we had lot of interactions so we had in 2018 or 18 18 we had given a draft bill new bill all together prepared for the international child removal bill dealing with these issues only where one of the parent had taken either the child from india to some other country or brought from foreign country to india but that is now pending with the government but this is a major area of litigation now and sometimes despite odd court orders the children are taken out then technological problems lot of them are there cyber crimes you are seeing lot of those are increasing and uh, if not i think there should be some course on cyber law also because this is the emerging field now everywhere you are finding lot of frauds using different different ways and means in cyber crime now another thing which i would like to touch which is important for the advocates is many of you may or may not know about the national judicial data grid probably in few colleges i have gone law colleges many of the students did not know about that now this is a national portal containing the details of all the judgments and the status of the cases pending in different courts throughout the country firstly the district courts and secondly the high courts high court and district court are available on the one portal national judicial data grid and for the supreme court there is a separate supreme court portal is there now you see you are going to any search engine for taking out a judgment earlier the system used to be there were law journals printing printed by the supreme court also the high courts also these used to be supreme court journal used to be called supreme court reports and the high courts used to be the indian law reports 
Punjab and Haryana cities, Allahabad series, all, all, all high courts, different series. There the printing of judgments used to take three, four, five months, six months, delayed process. So the private reporters came in. They would take the print copy of the judgment from the high court or supreme court and then print it. Now it is all online. No law journal which is available on the website also the judgments can have that judgment unless it is on the website of the high court or the supreme court. So first the judgment is available to you either on the NGDG portal or on the websites of the high court or the supreme court thereafter it will go to anybody else. And in the supreme court portal also you have the search engine also. For the high courts also you have the search engine. The quality is being improved of these searches but it has lot of parameters for search. So I think whenever you need some information, you should go to the Supreme Court website or the High Court's website or the NJDG to search out the judgment, to take out the different, different case or the status and this is updated on real time basis. And the, just see the kind of information available. The case status is available for more than 23 crore cases and you have the orders of about 22 crore cases. Nowhere in the world so much of data of a judicial system is available on the website throughout the world. And even the World Bank has also given sort of good comments for that, that the kind of work the Indian judicial system has done. And another thing, judgment is one part. If you go to that website, you will have different, different kinds of information. You have the information about the kinds of cases pending. You have the information about the year to which that case relates or how much cases are five year old, 10 year old, civil, criminal, different, different parameters are there. And there is also information about the reasons for delay, why the cases are being delayed in the courts. So that also is there. But my request to all of you would be that in case you go to that website in your spare time, see what kind of information is available. And as a layman, as a student of law, if you can think of some ways and means to improve the system, how we can serve the litigants better, you should always give those suggestions. These are all welcome. So this is what you can do at this age. <coughs> Another issue which is coming up, you may be knowing that there are privacy issues now. There are instructions that no case of crime against women or matrimonial cases in the crime against women, the name of the victim is not to be disclosed in, in either in the F FIR it is there but no judgment order or anything. It has to be mentioned X, Y, Z or whatever is there in the judgment also everywhere. Matrimonial cases also the names of the parties are to be masked. But lot of issues are coming, we get the emails also. The old era has gone now. It's not that the judgments are being printed in the books only, which are accessed only by the advocates. With the uploading of the order, these all go in the public domain, crores of people have the accessibility. Suppose a person is convicted by a trial court, and tomorrow he is acquitted also in the appeal and all that and somebody may take out the judgment only of the trial court that he is a convicted person and create lot of issues for him. We get email from the people why you have uploaded my judgment giving this information and put it in the public domain. This is an area of research where you should work. Think of something that how we can do this but you will find lot of judgments of the foreign countries where only first name is there. A versus so and so, R versus so and so, probably in lot of cases they don't mention the names. So how to proceed with that? This is a challenge now coming up in the judicial field because we are getting lot of emails though no decision as such has been taken. And what I would request to the university is that the link of NJDG and the Supreme Court or the High Court should be given along with the web on the website of the university only so that you have immediate access to that you need not go to the other website just open it up use the link you can immediately do it
Now you have also seen a lot of newspapers recently also law minister said that so much of cases are pending in court, 5 crore plus. This all information is available, it's in public domain only. But these all 5 crore cases are not the areas. Because there is annual filing of more than a crore cases. And almost this number is decided also, some are new, some are old. Because there is normal life cycle also of a case. So there are some issues in that, there is no doubt about it. But the solution is not only the increase of judges. The solutions are different because we have lot of frivolous litigation coming in court. Fair, the lawyers can play a big role. Somebody had carried out a study on that and he said about 50% cases in the courts are either withdrawn by the parties or just finish without any contest. And the real quality litigation which should come to the court is about 30%. Only 20 is also where somebody wants to just harass the other side, taking some interim order and all that. If that part is taken care of, probably the system may give you expeditious disposal and the people who really want justice in timelines can get it. We get lot of cases in the High Court also, we used to get old cases in the Supreme Court also where the FIR is of maybe late 70s or 80s. The man who was at that time in 20s is now maybe 60, in his 50s or 60s. What to do about those cases? Somebody has been acquitted, now against acquittal the appeal is. Lot of thinking has to be there whether to put him again in jail after 30 years or 40 years. So lot of issues come before us also. So this is one part I think you can do some exercise. And there was an old story of that, that there was a painter who had painted some good painting. And somebody said that there may be some defects in that. So he said to find out the defects, you just put this painting at a crossing and let the put a board that if somebody finds a defect in this painting, he should point out. So by the evening, the entire painting was marked. So he was very disturbed. So next day, his friend suggested that now you put the painting and write one line that suggests how to improve it. The painting was clean. Nobody could give any suggestion how to improve it. Defects everybody can point out. And this is what is happening in our system also. Every says, everybody says there are areas, the cases are not being decided. Give some suggestions also, how these can be worked out. And my experience goes that as a layman, you can think better on that that how things can be improved and especially now you have joined the legal education also. You can apply your mind and see where the system can be improved to give better service to the litigants. <coughs> now if you go to the website only, we have 4.43 crore cases pending in the district courts and about 60 lakh in the high courts that is available on the, on the NJ, NJDG. And for this five crore cases, there are about 17,000 judges throughout the country. So number is very less, but in any case, that's not an excuse for not deciding the cases. But one thing I can assure that whatever best possible, all the judges at the different levels are doing it. There is no doubt about it. But one thing is there. <coughs> If you have to have some detailed knowledge about the accessibility of NJDG website or how to have different, different types of information from that, we have master trainers for that. And I can request our district judge is there. He himself is a IT savvy man. He was the registrar computerization also in high court. And he can also send the officer here, he can guide us how to access the website. So that will be very easier for to carry out the search on the website because a lot of information is there. Now with that information, another thing I will just share with you, how your role is important in this entire thing. You have chosen a profession, legal profession, may have thought of many things, but there is another angle to it. India is the largest Populate country now, populate. We have crossed China also probably now recently. 
about 142 crores. What I had studied is that about 18% people are below poverty line. So those will be around 26 crore people. And thereafter about 25% people are those who earn about 3 lakhs a year in different, different jobs, maybe self-employed or employment. So if you take out both these, the balance comes to about 85, 86 crores. Either the people who are below poverty line or the people who are earning up to 3 lakhs, hardly they are in any kind of litigation. For them, maybe some PALs may be there and all that, but hardly, very less percentage. Now there are 5 crore cases pending in the court. And in one case, on an average, how much parties you will take? Four parties you will take in a case? On an average. There may be two also, there may be more than two also. So that figure will come to 20 crore. Means 20 crore parties are there in case. Cases, five crore cases. And in a family, you will take about four person on an average. And if you multiply that, the figure comes to about 80 crores. I'm not saying that each of the family in the country is affected by the litigation. But we are taking a larger picture that lot of people in the country are affected by the litigation. If it is not directly, if you just start thinking, maybe your family is not directly in litigation. Litigation doesn't mean that it has to be criminal only. Litigation means some service litigation also, some other type of litigation. You will find that some of your relatives or maybe some of your neighbor or other friend may be in litigation somewhere. So this is how almost entire country is affected by the litigation. I am not adding in this, the cases, these are the figures of the cases which are pending in courts only. There are a lot of tribunals also. There are a lot of revenue courts also where also crores of cases are pending. But the only difference is that this data of the courts is available at the national level on the grid. But there is no information, collective information available for all them, all of them. There are different, different tribunals now. Revenue land related matter goes to the tribunal only. So those figures if you add, practically everyone. So this is how your profession, how your role is important in the society. To bring peace also, to settle the disputes also. So this is <coughs> the important part of it. And in addition to that, in civil criminal cases, you know that a lot of evidence also is led. Those people may not be otherwise party to the litigation, but they are going to the court for the purpose of giving evidence in some case. So this is one, one part you have to keep in mind. <coughs> Now public services also, Professor Rajkumar has told that in freedom struggle, we had lot of lawyers who had left their practice, lucrative practice. Mahatma Gandhi was probably the only person, a lawyer who was given the title of Mahatma and Rashtrapita. No other person was given. Now, for that angle that if we can do something for the, for the society also, There are about 1800 law colleges in the country and we have about 5 lakh law students throughout the country. 13 lakh advocates are practicing. This is the information available on websites, different, different. There may be some plus minus on different websites. And annual joining of the law graduates in the profession is about 60 to 70,000. Those much, those much advocates may not be leaving the practice, so number is adding day by day. And lot of lawyers you must have seen, and especially the students now who are coming from the legal background, they may have heard, they may be knowing that in COVID time, lot of lawyers who were just hand to mouth, they had left their practice because they could not afford living in the cities who had come from rural background or otherwise also because they were just hand to mouth. In Chandigarh also a lot of lawyers had left. I was in Allahabad. Covid time I was in three courts in fact different different times. I was in Jammu also thereafter Calcutta and then Allahabad. 
So in one case, at one court, we were just thinking of using the IT for supplying of the certified copies of the orders to the litigants while he is at home only, he can apply online and all that. Fee also payment copy will be supplied at its home. In Chandigarh we had done something like that. So one of the suggestion which came to me that we should not do it here because lot of lawyers there were dependent only on this part. They will just get the certified copy from the high court and give it in the district courts. They were just earning their livelihood out of that. So this is how lot of lawyers were hand to mouth. They were from rural areas. Yes, and I know of a judge who retired from a northeast state. He used to say himself only, I met him in 2006, that I was a newspaper hawker. He had put in lot of hard work and reason from that stage to become a judge of the high court. So hard work has all the magic in that, which you should never lose. Now giving back to the society, you all must be knowing about the Legal Service Authority Act. And if not, we should read it. Visit the website of the National Legal Service Authority. State Legal Services Authorities are there. That link also can be given to you. In India, we have about 6,40,000 villages and again 5 lakh students and out of 640 probably on one website it was there about 70-80,000 are the villages where the population is less than 500 or so. But in any case that, that is the figure at the national level. If we come to Sonipat, what I could see is there are only 328 villages in district Sonipat and in this global university only we have 1000 law students in one class only. And there are other colleges also, leave aside that. But my suggestion is that if a group of students adopt a village and just provide all these services which are to be given as per the Legal Service Authority Act to that people living there, I think this will be a great service on one side, yes, you are going to the global part, international education, good for your career. But just little backward also, connect yourself. You were told that we are living close to the nature here. In the evening, you may hear a lot of birds also, morning also, because a lot of greenery is there. But if you go to the villages also, provide them some service, some service, some which are provided in the Legal Service Authority Act, probably this will give you more satisfaction and more real experience in life because India lives in villages. We have about 60% people living in villages only. And shifting to the urban areas is only because little facilities are better. Otherwise, the people who are living in urban areas, they are moving to the rural areas. They say we need to have farmhouses. They are going to the rural areas. And from rural area, the people are shifting to them. But there are a lot of people living there who may be benefited with your, this effort. And you will learn the real issues affecting the society, which will always be helpful in your profession. Because practical knowledge is very important. So this, I think, if you can do this, we have the district legal service authority also at the district level. They can also be associated with coordination, probably you can provide a lot of service to the people living in this area and change their lives. And they would be very happy in that. And selfless service, yes, in freedom struggle it was there. So you should not think that what the country has done for you. You should think that what you can do for the country. If you think that way, probably country which is, you are seeing that we are rising like anything. We have made our place in the world now. Everybody thinks that, no, we need to consult India also for doing something. It's our collective effort in all fields. If we also do some effort, probably one day we may be at the top. And if you, after doing your law also, my suggestion will be that majority of us should join legal profession in courts. And if you do that, it's a great service, in fact, because we need good advocates in litigation also, in judicial service also. 
because law is not something which is static it is evolving the same provision will have different interpretation with the times of come times to come and for that one example is your article 21 is a one and a half line article only see the kind of life has been put in the right to life there by the supreme court by different judgments this is a matter of research only you see how the law grows how we say that the constitution is a living document this is how we say there are many other statutes also with the time the interpretation changes because as the society changes we have to think differently so for that also the intellect is required if the law has to grow probably if the students from the good institutes good universities like this who have global exposure also go for litigation go for judicial service we will see a good change in our system in litigation and another thing which is connected with this is probably if you go in service only either you are a good teacher the people will know you throughout you all must have heard the though he was a, i think retired bureaucrat professor madhav menon he was the brain child for all this i think legal education reforms whatever is there is his brain child so people know him or lot of teachers people will remember throughout the country who had been heading the universities different universities if you go in service probably nobody nobody will remember you nobody will know you maybe a little pe people in the corporate circle or maybe your friends or relatives if you go in litigation you are a good counsel you go in history if you go join the judicial service you go in history because your judgments will always remain either as a counsel or as a judge so this is a big change if you join the legal litigation part either as an advocate or as a judge also maybe you don't get that much of money as compared to a lawyer and in the corporate world you may get yes good pay packet but the kind of satisfaction you have while joining judicial service probably you will not get in the service also with that pay packet even one of your friend or maybe more will see and meet you if you are a judge he will have a different regard for you as compared to he will also be jealous that oh he is a judge he maybe he is getting more salary so see the difference so i think you should have this also as a choice lot of vacancies throughout the country and here you are there and i think good positive part that you have the students from throughout the country all states try to learn different languages also because that is the only hard hurdle for your examination for the different states you need to have the knowledge of the local language there is some exam of a local language and the competition will naturally be less for those states because you can have only the local people there if you see the hindi part all north india hindi speaking people will contest for all the seats in different states seven eight states but if you go to punjab only the punjabi knowing people so competition is very less so if you learn punjabi also you can compete there similarly other states gujarat you go very limited competition but gujarati is close to hindi so if you learn that so that is i think the added advantage you have you have the students from throughout the country try to learn as much language as you can then you will be truly an indian so this is one part and i read somewhere that is there that for legal profession four c's are very important concentration competence knowledge clarity and commitment because unless you concentrate on the th any of the issue any of the problem which comes to you you can't get results out of it and competence and clarity of thought is required not confusing if you address arguments in court or prepare a case not with clarity or only with confusion probably will not get anything commitment is required because somebody has come to you given some money and his problem also so you have to be naturally committed to serve that person so that is required now if you see the it it system in the courts you must all be aware of it 
NJDG website is there. You must be reading all the news. Lot of IT is being used in the courts now. And this pace, I think, increased many fold during the COVID period. Because at that time, lot of institutes were closed, but the judicial court system could not be kept closed. So hearing, filing and all that was all online. Online filing, hearing through VC, and this has picked up like anything. In Supreme Court, what we see, hardly any lawyer brings a file. They are all either bringing the laptop or the iPad. From that, they are arguing their cases. And many of the judges also are using that. And there are studies, if you find that, how much paper is used in court. And paper use of paper, waste of paper in the court is, again, having dark impact on the environment. So try to save. Use the technology for that positive part also. And you need a lot of space also to store the papers. So this is very important part. I can share that in the first phase of COVID, I was in Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir High Court. Everything closed. Few days when to complete lockdown was there, so we could not work. Perchance there we had the soft copy of all the paper books, the pending cases also, which is not there in all courts, but perchance it was there. So when the things started opening up a little bit. We put our IT team, prepared the cause list, and attached the soft copy of the paper books with that. Can you imagine, I was at my home, and sometimes at Chandigarh also. Both the lawyers at their own houses. The state council also, we used to provide them the soft copy from the court only. Even the private lawyer also, because some lawyers had offices at different places. Movement was a little difficult, so their clerks were also not coming. They said the paper book is not there, how we argue. We provided them also, because we had the soft copies. My bench secretary or the reader, whatever name you say, court master, he was at his home. My secretary who was taking dictation, he was at his home. All at different places. And we could conduct the court. May not be complicated cases, but little, little work could go on. Everything, dictation also on telephone only. And at that time, because of 5th of August 2019, there was a lot of shutdown of the internet also. So that was also an issue. Only the people could work on the broadband if they had. Even if the mobile was not working, we could hear the arguments on landline also. In court also, we heard the arguments on landline, leave aside VC and all that or sometimes the WhatsApp call, different, different ways and means we had used. This is how the court system worked. And a lot of lawyers, now you are seeing in Supreme Court also, or High Court also appear, people appear from abroad. There also, lawyers who were going abroad, they appeared and argued from there also. They truly, basically, people say that justice at doorstep, they say. Now you can file a case sitting at home and address arguments from your home. Copy of order also you can just download from the website sitting at home. So this is a real change in the judicial system. And that, I think, COVID time, whatever was there, has brought us to virtual classrooms also. And the positive part of it is probably otherwise if some teacher has to teach you, he has to be physically present here. So, and here, a lot of faculty is from different countries. So this is one facility available, one option available. If somebody has not enough of time to travel and give you a lecture, he can always spare some time sitting in his own country for one hour, two hours to just give a lecture to you. And this saves a lot of time and energy. For law research also, you have a lot of portals, a lot of search engines available. But one thing which I feel is that a lot of lawyers who are appearing in court, especially the youngsters, they depend on the search made out from that portal. They will put some two, three, four words, search it and see the paragraph there and place that judgment before the court. They have not gone through the entire judgment. They don't know about the facts of that case. If you ask them a few questions, they will not be knowing anything about it. They will not be knowing the provisions which are considered there. There may be different language in those provisions. 
as compared to the language used in that provision. There may be subsequent amendment also, but they don't see all this. I don't know if you ask me, maybe difficult for me to remember anything which is seen on the screen as compared to reading a book. We are still of that age only. If we read a book, we have some photogenic memory also, something is registered. In our times, as I shared with you, if you have to search a judgment, maybe 20, 30 books you have to read. You have to read the judgments also again from the book. Finally, you may get two, three or four judgments, but in the process you have gone through maybe 20, 30, 40 judgments. Those also are registered in your mind. But in the computer you say search, one point you have given, you get 100 judgments. You say no, little more. You will put one more search in search. Finally, you get three, four, five, you will read that only. So this is a different era. But I think you should read the judgments in detail. See the provisions also and then probably cite those in court or put in your research paper or maybe when you are in a moot court competition so that you are not embarrassed with anything which is there. One thing is more important, chat GPT and all that has come, but don't let the technology take you over. Let it be for assistance only. Take whatever is there. Recently I was in a program because our brain also works. Don't let the brain stop working. Otherwise, if you are dependent, your brain will stop working. In a program of AI, artificial intelligence, so there was some book release also. So sometimes you feel that a lot of tapes are put on that cover. So it was taking little time. So jokingly there was there that can the AI provide a solution for this? That how to open this? But if you have to find, maybe it provides you a solution for that. But it will take longer time. You have to some maybe scan that, put it somewhere, and then get an answer how to open this. But if your brain works, it's a little job. You have a pencil or pen and you just put it and cut the tape and all that. So every solution may or may not be there or it may take more time but don't stop thinking because human brain if you keep it fertile you continue using it you will get more good results as compared to artificial intelligence because that end of the day will remain artificial only no human approach whatever the logarithms are there maybe machine learning with machine learning they can give you some better results but still human approach may not come so your brain should always be working, there is no stage you should stop that. No, another important aspect is your ethic part, which is in fact, uh, before that I think you can work on another thing. There is a data protection bill also pending consideration with the parliament. You are all connected because it is ultimately data belonging to you also to the general public which is being used, misused. Any app you download they take yes, yes, yes from different, different material which is there on your mobile and using that data for good or bad reasons, for good or bad purpose or selling it. So that act is trying to give some protection. Study that act, suggest amendments in that because it's ultimately going to affect all of us. And artificial intelligence also how to use it responsibly because you are seeing lot of crimes being committed with artificial intelligence. Somebody shared with me that people are asking chat GPT how to commit this crime and not caught. So this suggestions also chat GPT is giving. You are seeing people are having the face of someone and then calling his friend or relative with the same voice that I am in difficulty sitting here, send me the money. So these are the things coming in. So how to regulate all this? Which are the good part of AI? Which are the dangerous part of AI? The government is also thinking to come out with some law or guidelines for that. I think you should do some work in that also and make suggestions which are practical and in addition to that because it's a global university and uh, 
you have the interaction with the students of from foreign countries here or you go to the other countries also study the system there and compare that with our country and see where procedural part because substantive part is our own system where the procedural part in any country is good which can be adopted here and we can fast track our cases do that research also make some suggestions maybe some of them are accepted and you may be ultimately happy that yes you made out something then comes your ethics part also i can share you there are a lot of marriages which are being celebrated without the consent of the family members in loose terms they call runaway couples for that also a lot of sms and all that circulated that he can conduct this case as a package or something i read one of very big flex 5 6 years back somebody was appointed additional advocate general he had put a very big flex like political persons that i am thankful to so and so for appointing me as additional advocate general a political person similarly lot of kind of advertisements you will find some lawyers name written on a board living in this side arrows and all that so this all is not permitted so we have to be very careful about this because this is not that kind of a profession and for a lawyer if you see communication skills are very important because unless you can convey convey the view point the idea you have the solution to any problem you have probably you will not succeed so that you have to learn that in how much brief few lines you can convey the entire thing that is very important and clarity of thought also is required i read one article written by mr c k daftri if you have heard his name he was one of the top lawyers in the country he said a good lawyer is not who spends more time in reading he should spend time in thinking because with thinking only the solutions will come and you should always be a problem solver not problem creator as i told you about late op jindal he had solution for everything if you sit with him he will never say no he will give you some idea float some idea may not be that highly educated but practical person so those are the thing and the hard work yes other things all you know in profession honesty and uh, one important part is that sometimes you are we are very casual in court and start a case initially at the stage saying something sorry because some error is there so don't create that impression wherever you there in whichever profession you are there maybe you join service also it is equally important there also and then time also time management is one of the important part because ultimately you are not in any business where you will sell commodities you are only selling your time and time is the quality time and then you need to manage your time that how you utilize it for which purpose whether you utilize for the less important things more time you utilize or otherwise so that is very important for that and initially i said you that don't run after money that is very important part strike is another thing i in legal profession but supreme court is quite strict on that now but you should not indulge because this is not a profession where the strike is the solution and ethics also yes i just forgot you must have read the incident in the delhi courts where two lawyer two group of lawyers started firing at each other there was firing in the other district court also some gangster was killed similarly in lucknow also different different places in court room only in the dress of a lawyer and the problem is sometimes the issue discussed is of security but the practical problems comes you can't they say a lawyer a person coming in a black coat he should not be checked this is the problem is being faced for security that is why anybody just put in a black coat and enters the court maybe with the weapons and all that but maybe we have to find solution for that i think i have taken lot of your time maybe some little experience which i had in life i have shared with you 
again congratulating all of you for your great achievement a new beginning <laughs> you will know live with law in this university for next 5 years and throughout your life and thankful to the university also otherwise coming here is difficult for us thank you jai yes. hind we thank our chief guest honorable justice rajesh bindal for his kind words thoughtful guidance and suggestion and the comprehensive and insightful lecture on life in law stemming from his own profound understanding rich experience and contribution to law and the society at large with that we would now move to the felicitation ceremony i request professor c rajkumar to felicitate our chief guest honorable justice rajesh bindal i request the members of their family mrs renuka bindal and mr himanshu bindal to please join us on the dais i also request our dignitaries mr pramod goyal district judge of sonipat and mr arvind kumar chief judicial magistrate to please join us on the dais for the felicitation ceremony for our students this is the jgu scarf with the colors of all 12 schools of jgu I now invite Professor Dabiru Sridhar Patnaik, Registrar, OP Jindal Global University, to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nisha Nair. Good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, Honorable uh, Justice Rajesh Pindal and his family. And we also have the presence of uh, District Judge uh, Pramod Ji and uh, his colleague, Chief Judicial Magistrate, Mr. Uh, Arvind Kumar, uh, first of all, I echo the uh, sentiments of the Vice Chancellor, the Executive, De Executive Dean, and the Distinguished Chief Guest this evening, and I join them in congratulating each one of you on your achievement of joining the Jindal Global Law School, one of the top 100 law schools in the world and the number one law school in the country. Uh, we couldn't have asked for a great beginning, uh, having the opportunity to hear Justice Bindal on his life and experiences in the field of law. And this is indeed a great beginning, even in terms of your career path, as to what you can expect if you become a lawyer or a legal uh, academic or whatever you intend to do, because he has vividly laid down all the areas and the emerging areas as well that one can expect to dabble with and to work in the foreseeable future. On this particular note, I also would like to share with each one of you that you have an ecosystem here at the Jindal Global Law School and even the OP Jindal Global University, which will enable you to develop intellectually, socially, and emotionally. But the only appeal that I would like to make on my own behalf and on behalf of the university is to take up your university citizenry in a much more responsible manner and having your responsibility towards your own education and towards your career path and most importantly even to respect 
the university regulations and the diversity and the heterogeneity of the university. You will be receiving several communications in the next few days about your coursework, your schedules, and so many other aspects about life at the General Global Law School and even at the university. So we expect you to take up all these communications in a sincere way and uh, proceed ahead with your education at the law school and the university. My best wishes to each one of you and I congratulate you once again and we thank the Honorable Justice for having taken out time on a Sunday and just at the turn of the beginning of the new week to be here with all of us and to inspire each one of us. Thank you very much.